welcome back to Natural Geography. I'm your host, Dr. Zeno. As our scientific journey takes us to Africa, we find a rather interesting type of animal, the potta. Scientific name, Paradictacus potto. This curious animal is a distant relative of monkeys and apes. Foraging food in the treetops of the African rainforest, the potto's diet consists mainly of bugs. These gentle creatures are often referred to as the cutie pies of the rainforest. <laughs> cutie pies? What? Excuse me, Dr. Zeno, are your eyeballs off duty? Um, we pottos are not cute. We are hardworking, intelligent scientists. Devilishly handsome, maybe, but definitely not cute. Kick it! From the dawn of civilization throughout every land and nation, it's been a potto's occupation to teach about science. Big Max, Dr. Zeno, and historical figures too. With my video lab, kids will explain it all to you. All I want to hear is kids to say, Professor Potto is the one who makes science fun to play. And I'll always dream of the day my friends will be telling me that Potto's the reason they love science. A professor's what I am in teaching science is terrific. Why don't you come into my tree to learn the scientific So Sit right back and learn science as you want to, because you know where there is science, there is always a Pato. All I'm wanting is kids to say, Professor Pato is the one who makes science fun to play. And I'll always dream of the day my friends will be telling me that Pato's the reason they love science today. To say, Professor Pato is the one who makes science fun to play. And I'll always dream of the day my friends will be telling me that Pato's the reason they love science today. Let's check it out. Professor Pato's video lab. <laughs> You're listening to Radio Nairobi. Coming right up, we'll be announcing the winners of this year's Natural Geography Foundation Science Grant. As you know, this year the Natural Geography Foundation is awarding a special prize of one million dollars. It goes to the scientist who has contributed the most to the study of primates, that is apes, monkeys, and their cousins, the Prosimians. That's me! I'm a Prosimian, Peredicticus Potto, the paragon of primates. <laughs> Shh! Professor? They're going to announce the winner soon, and I'm up for this award. Oh, boy, if I win this, do you know how famous I'll be? Every scientist in the world will know my name, and I'll win a million bucks. All because you're studying me? You got it. Well, what do I get? You what? You get the satisfaction that comes from helping me win. You're too generous. And now, to announce the winner of this year's million dollar award, <laughs> I got to hear this. Oh, ah! oh there we go. Oh, I, no, I just no, want to take here. No, I, no, I want to just take the volume oh, over here. Oh, 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 the oh, oh, winner oh. is. Oh. Congratulations, oh. Vic. Oh. Money and. Oh dear. Lots of fame and. I don't believe that you just million. did that. So oh, you can. Oh. 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 The winner oh. is. Oh. Oh. Wait, no, don't touch that. It might blow. Ah. That was you. That was you this time, it wasn't me. I didn't oh, do it. now, please, Professor, blaming people is very childish. Uh, the important thing is that we have a working radio by four o'clock so I can find out if I won a million bucks! <laughs> Does Radio Shack deliver? To the top of the African rainforest? I don't <laughs> think so. Um, well, the thing is, what we need to find you another radio, then. Oh, we need to find another radio. We are 200 feet straight up in a tree. Where are we gonna find another radio? Well, I could build you another radio. You can build me a radio? Sure, no problem. <sighs> I can't find this anywhere. It must be up here. Wait, it, doctor. Hold on, that I'll wait there. Ah, there it is. Okay. What have we got here? Let's see. Robot, ray gun. Ah, radio. Ooh, there are lots of different kinds here. Let's see, we have AM radios, boom boxes, car radios, FM radios, ship radios, Walkman radios. Wow, what kind do you want to build? I just want you to build me one that works. Can you do that? Hey, I can do it. No problem. A piece of cake. A 
does the radio work? What? You don't know? Well, do you? Of course I know how. You turn it on and you hear the music playing or somebody talking, whatever. Oh, so you don't really know, do you? Of course. Sure I do, yes. No. I didn't think so. Well, let's check it out! No, let's not check it out. Okay, no. now, what no, you please. need is a basic education in radio communications. No, Pato, this is no time for a radio education course. Do you understand, you furry <laughs> little fiend? Doctor, there is no such thing as no time for education. Okay, but please, first, just build me a radio. You know what we could do? We could have a treasure radio. hunt, an educational treasure hunt. Big Max could run it. It'll be great. This'll be so much fun. Please, don't oh, give, give me a break. <laughs> Oh, come on, it'll be fun. A treasure hunt for knowledge run by the world's most advanced computer, Big Max, the Maxtodon 1086. He computes, he talks, and he can even handle time travel. <laughs> and along the way, you can meet influential friends. Friends who can show you how radio came to be invented. I don't care how radio came to be invented, you miserable little fuzzball. Yo. I don't know if I want a million bucks. Doctor, 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 that is hardly scientific behavior. Oh, well, I'll show you scientific behavior, you buggy little... Oh, my <laughs> goodness, oh, my God. Max, quick, engage to the head. Get me out of here! <laughs> doctor, doctor, it's not very easy to run a time machine with your hands around my throat. <laughs> oh, this that is my is favorite scary. part. I like traveling through time. It's my favorite part of science. <laughs> Uh, Doctor, you might help me over here. Press touch the button before we Whoa! drive. Hey, I traveled through time. Isn't this great? I knew you'd like it. Here, we better land here. Or maybe here. Whoa. Huh. Where are we? Well, before radio, there was the telephone. We're back in 1876 when Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. Of course, Mr. Bell will need the advice of the splendid Professor Potter. Oh, no, you don't. Don't interfere. You're going to mess up history. Oh, but I'm just trying to help the human species. We don't need your help. Ah, so much you know. Behind every scientific advancement, there stands a Potter. But very well. I won't say anything, anything at all, nothing. We'll see how well you humans can do on your own. You <laughs> promise? Word of honor of a potto. I won't say a word. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, let's try it out. Ah! Who let the groundhog in my laboratory? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Bell, he's a pet groundhog. Be a good hoggy. I call him hoggy, hey. Remember, no talking, you promise. Just what are you and your groundhog doing in my lab, miss? Well, Hoggy and I understood that you were about to invent the telephone. Well, <laughs> it's sort of a secret. I haven't patented it yet. Telephone. Good name. I like it. <laughs> I guess it'll make writing letters seem pretty old-fashioned. It'll do that for sure, if it works. You're just talking to this mouthpiece here. What? Why? You see, there's a magnet in there and the electric current. My voice makes the magnet move back and forth a little bit, and that makes slight changes in the electric current. Fascinating. You know, it's a shame that my hoggy can't understand a word that you're saying. Oh, you see, the electric current travels down these wires here to a receiver that's miles and miles away. Well, upstairs, actually, where my assistant, Mr. Watson, is there right now listening. You know, it might be better if you... Pay no attention to him, Mr. Bell. He's just a naughty, naughty groundhoggy. Ah! Miss, that's battery acid! Watson, come here, I need you! I'll be right down. Did you hear that? It works! It works! My yacht! Telephone! Telephone works! Congratulations! Ah. You just invented a telephone! Thank you. Oh. I must be dreaming. I just shook hands with a groundhog. A what? A groundhog! Mm. Mm. I'm a potto! Groundhoggy indeed. I ought to have left you behind back in 1876. Everybody knows groundhogs can't talk. I mean, the dancers don't when you get to know them. What was the whole point of that trip? Telephones use wires. I need a radio, no wires. Well, I was about to tell him how to make a telephone without wires, but no, you had to stop me. When do humans ever listen to animals? I mean, fruit bats, for instance, know quite a lot about biochemistry. Professor, <laughs> why can't we just go visit the person who invented the first radio? Ah, but of course. Let's see, that would be... 
Guglielmo Marconi, Canada, the island of Newfoundland, 1901. Great. That's what I want. Well, this time, let me help. Remember, behind every scientific advancement, there stands a photo! Whoa! Excuse me. Go away. I'm brooding. I'm sitting here in this miserable shack on this miserable island with this useless wireless receiver. My friends are trying to send me a signal from England, and I can't hear it. Are you Marconi, the inventor of radio? I'm Marconi, yes. Inventor, no. My invention isn't working, and that, that's the problem. The wire? I thought you were sending messages without wires. That's my antenna. Oh, your antenna! Yes. My receiver won't pick up any radio waves unless they strike an antenna. This wire is useless. Don't you have enough? Oh, I have enough. The problem is it's on the ground. It's not an antenna unless it's sticking up in the air, maybe several hundred feet. I didn't realize it would have to be so high. My friends will stop transmitting in oh, one hour. I've failed miserably. But you are Marconi. <laughs> You're famous. Mm. You're the inventor of the radio. Mm. You've got to succeed. Why don't you try hooking I've the... I've tried everything. I even put a special wire coil onto the receiver that would concentrate the waves. I could have used a balloon. I didn't bring a balloon. Ta-da! Knew it. <laughs> Behind every scientific discovery, there stands a bottle. No problem, Marconi. Just use a very long pole. A tower of power in less than an hour. Be careful, Matt. <laughs> There's a very dangerous looking badger in the room with us. Ah, a badger? Where? And Where? It oh, talks. Get... My scientific failure is driving me crazy. I am not a badger. I am a bottle. If you knew your biology better, maybe your radios would improve. Now, all we need is a very long pole. I don't have just... a very long pole. Oh, well, you a just kite. Have to go get I don't have enough to of... Find... What did you say? A kite. A kite. A kite. You're a kite, kite would kite. carry your antenna as high as you need it. Yes. Yes? A kite. What? You're a genius. But don't go away. Wait a minute. You need a... Pole. Marconi called me a genius. <laughs> Here. I don't want this. What, what are you doing here? What is going on? I, Maybe I, your badger can help launch this. Cave. I am not that Hold bad. this. Run! <laughs> oh, where am I going? Ah, 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 ah! Oh, Professor. Above every scientific discovery, there hangs a pot Help me! Somebody get me down. It was your idea. What a mind. You! shall have the honor of hearing the first wireless message across the Atlantic Ocean. I can't hear anything, just hiss and static. Nothing? Uh, ooh, ooh, that tickles. What was that? Uh, oh, wait, wait, I do hear something. Dit, dit, dit. Dit, 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 what's that? That's it. That's the message. It's code for the letter S. That's the message? And S, that's the message? Isn't it beautiful? I wrote it myself before I left England. S. Great. First an invention that can't talk without wires, and now an invention without wires that can't talk. You mean you can't transmit a voice? Voice? I never thought of that. What a fool I was to think wireless signals were enough. I send the very first wireless message across the Atlantic, and already the public wants more. Hold on, Professor! <laughs>
<laughs> Boy, that was fun. I like that. Let's do it again. No, I don't think so. I think you've learned enough for one day. No, no, Professor. I love learning science from you. I especially like the squealy bit you do when you go up in the air. Uh, some people think they're so smart. Some people don't really want to build a radio. It was almost worth a million bucks just to see that. Huh? What am I saying? A million bucks! We only have 20 minutes. We build that radio and we build it now. Okay, we build the radio now. <laughs> radio. You had that all along. I have a lot of stuff. This is a crystal radio, or it will be when we build it. What's a crystal radio? Oh, it's a radio that uses a little crystal detector called a diode to pick up radio waves, just like very early radios. Now, it doesn't have an amplifier, so it's not very loud, but it works. Say, we're not going to listen to some dit, 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 are we? Fear not, Doctor. Here is the end of your quest. This tiny device brings together voice and wireless. Behold, the mini marvel of the age, the heart of your crystal radio, the miraculous diode! Turns radio waves into words. Uh, sort of. Oh, this better work, Professor. A million bucks may rest on it. Okay, so where do we start? Well, with the instruction book, of course. Okay, now, you should have all the stuff in front of you. This is the part you've been waiting for. We're going to build a radio. Make sure you have all the parts and get the other things listed on the page, too. Oh, you might also want to get an adult to work with you. You could probably do it all by yourself, but then they would miss out on all the fun. Adults like to learn a lot. Here's what your radio is going to look like. A crystal radio finished form consists of a coil of wire wrapped around a tube, a tuning ball that slides back and forth along the coil, an earphone, and two wires. One is an antenna. You hold the other one in your hand when you listen to the radio. And finally, a crystal diode. Now start building the kit. Follow the instructions in your booklet. And when you come to the part about winding the coil, come back to the video. There's a trick about winding the coil that I need to show you. The trick in winding the coil is you don't wind the wire around the tube. You turn the tube and the wire wraps around it. When you wind the coil, hold one end of the coil tube with your thumb over the coil wire like this. Then turn the tube with your other hand. The wire will wind around the tube in a coil. Now keep your thumb resting on top of the wire, guiding it so it lies smooth and flat on the coil tube. Now it's tricky, so do it carefully. Don't rush it. Now go back to the instruction book and follow the instructions to finish making the radio. Oh, <laughs> finished? Well, just wrap your antenna wire around the antenna wire of the tree here. I don't hear anything. <sighs> Radio Nairobi. We Wait, I've got Radio Nairobi! Test of the wow. Oh, it actually works! Mwah. I didn't think you could do it. Oh, never doubt a potto! Okay, we have six minutes before they announce the winner again. You know, I bet you're wondering how someone's voice is transmitted and picked up by radio. Not six minutes before I win a million bucks, I don't. Six minutes? That's enough. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, give it up! back! <laughs> Watch carefully, Doctor. First, we just pop this radio up onto Big Max's screen. There we are. Now I'll just transport myself onto Big Max's screen. Oh, the tickle toy like this is so much fun. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, there I am. Oh, I'm still devilishly handsome, even digitized. Now, this is my voice speaking into a microphone. You can see the sound waves going into the mic. The microphone core has electricity going through it all the time. Oh, that's the blue stuff that's there. Yeah. Okay, now watch carefully. Pato! <laughs> pato, 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 pato. Do you see those waves, Doctor? The mic is turning my voice into electricity. The electrical signal with my voice goes into a radio transmitter. 
there, it meets a new electric current called a carrier signal that's vibrating back and forth more than a million times a second. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Now, the two signals combine. The carrier wave picks up the pattern of the sound signal. Then, it races up a radio tower. Then something amazing happens. When an electric current vibrates back and forth the way the carrier current does, it creates radio waves. And they zoom out into space. And they still carry the pattern of the original sound waves. Now, if a radio wave hits a piece of metal, it creates electricity. Now, suppose the metal is the antenna of your radio. Well, the radio wave creates a tiny electric current, which goes down the antenna and into your radio. Ta-da! But there's a problem. The problem is that we have less than two minutes no, left. The problem is the shape of the electrical signal. Look, the bottom half is the opposite of the top half. The two halves cancel each other out. We have to get rid of the bottom half. You come back here right now. Science first, Doctor. Fortunately, your radio has a diode. It's a kind of electronic door that lets the top half of the signal through. And now the signal can travel to your earphone and you hear the original sound. Ah, oh, that is music to my ears. Oh, I like that so much. <laughs> Professor, we have 30 seconds. Well, then what are you standing around here for? Let's go. Oh, I'm so excited. If I win. Fame and fortune. A million bucks. Hey, that's not fair. I can't hear anything. But then build your own radio. Nah, I'll just use this one. What? You had that all along? Like I said, I have a lot of stuff. Why, you little... Dr. 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 No, let's be so... And now to announce, one last time, the winner of the Natural Geography Award for the study of primates... <laughs> I will equip with anticipation. And the winner of the award is... Professor Otto! I'm the best! Oh, I'm the greatest! Oh, this is great! But the contest is only for scientists who study primates. Well, humans are primates too! And I've been studying you! And you've been a fascinating study. Fascinating. Professor Bato, if you're out there, your prize will be delivered shortly. <laughs> this is great. This is I great. can't believe you won. Oh, don't be sad. I'll share my prize with you. You will? You'll share with me? A million bucks? Of course. You'll share? Of course. He's going to share it with me. A million bucks! A million bucks! Ah, a million bucks! A million bucks! A million no, no, bucks! Not exactly. Not no, exactly. A million bucks! Oh, oh, hold on. There it is. There it is. Hang on. Just a minute. Oh, this is so great. It's always good to be recognized for your accomplishments. Oh, there you are. Oh, good. Thank you so very much. <laughs> a million bucks. 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 Oh, oh, give me a million bucks. Oh, a million bucks. There it is. A million bucks. Dr. Zeno, I had them change the price a little bit. Actually, not a million bucks, but a million bugs. <laughs> some whipped cream with that? That's it! But I just want to tell you that you have four opportunities to have fun and learn science the butter way! <laughs> with four Professor Pato Video Labs! There's fun, games, and science magic with my Electromagnetics Video Lab! And you can build a real working electric motor with my Electric Motor Video Lab! <laughs> And with my Crystal Radio Video Lab, you can listen to broadcasts on the radio that you build yourself. And you can learn about the mysterious force called electricity with my Electricity Video Lab. Professor Butto's Video Lab! From the dawn of civilization throughout every land and nation, it's been a Bato's occupation to teach about science. Big Max, Dr. Zeno, and historical figures too. With my video lab, kids will explain it all to you. All I want to hear is kids to say, Professor Bato is the one who makes science fun to play. And I'll always dream of the day my friends will be telling me that Bato's the reason they love science today. A professor's what I am in teaching science is terrific. Why don't you come into my trials to learn the scientific source? Sit right back and learn science as you want to, because you know where there is science, there is always a pop.